What's up guys, welcome back to another video. I was lucky enough to get tickets to the SCAD Film Festival and I watched a handful of movies and I just want to talk about them and share my reviews. I started off the film festival with Minari. I have so much to say about this, but then again, nothing at all. Minari focuses on a Korean family in the 1980s moving from the West Coast to Arkansas to live a better life on a small farm. Minari is simply beautiful. I never cared so much for a family in a film more in my life. The moment this started and you hear the score, I knew I was watching something special. It was so personal and intimate, it tore right through my heart. It was stunningly shot, it looked absolutely exquisite. The acting was phenomenal, it's the reason you're glued to the TV and you care about them. Steven Yeun is a tour de force in this film, and my personal favorites were Will Patton as Paul, Yoon Yun, I think that's how you pronounce it, as the grandma, and of course Alan Kim as David. Everyone is at their peak in this film. It's touching, it's mesmerizing, it made me smile from the moment it started to the moment it ended. I loved it. Everything you hear about Minari is true. The second film I watched during the film festival was Boys State. Boys State follows a thousand 17 year old boys from Texas to build a representative government from the ground up and let me just say, this was extremely eye opening. It's a fantastic look into how broken our political system is. We specifically follow four students, Renee, who wants to follow the rules and uphold decency. Ben, a conservative political dork, Robert, who cares more about power than his own beliefs, and Steven, a soft-spoken progressive. It's pretty horrifying to see how alike the camp is to the way politics actually run, especially today. The camp is mainly conservative, but following Renee and Steven, we have some sliver of hope. Aside from the politics, Boys State runs a little long, but does so so we can see every little ounce of corruption that overtakes these young men. It's not eye-opening in the way I hoped, it's eye-opening opening because no matter what age, corruption wins. Rene put it best with saying this about his opponent, Ben. I think he's a fantastic politician, but I don't think that's a compliment either. The next film I watched was Nine Days. Nine Days is about a reclusive man who conducts multiple interviews with human souls for a chance to be born. I'm kind of at a loss for words when it comes to this film. Not because I thought it was phenomenal, but because it was stunningly original. This felt extremely special and I was in awe the entire way through. It made me question how I look at life and why to look at the beauty behind the ugliness. It's powerful and it serves as an example of why we need more love and empathy. Winston Duke as Will plays such an enigma of a character and the film really shows his growth throughout the nine days more than the souls he looks after. The score and the cinematography had a Terrence Malick-esque feeling which kind of took me out of it but it was elegant nonetheless. The more I think about it, I'll need to rewatch it again and I believe everyone should experience it. The next film I watched was Black Bear, and I just have to say, give Aubrey Plaza her Oscar now. Black Bear is about a female filmmaker who goes to a rural retreat only to find that the woods summer her inner demons in intense and surprising ways. I didn't understand every single thing that happened, but I never hated one thing that happened. This is split into two halves, and trying to figure out what's connected or if it makes sense is all part of the mysterious vibe to this movie. Aubrey Plaza gives it her absolute all in this film. She proves to all the haters that she is one of the most talented actors working today. Christopher Abbott is great as well and adds this to his impressive filmography. I just can't get that last outburst by Aubrey Plaza out of my head. She was phenomenal. It's a must watch. The next film was The Sound of Metal. In Sound of Metal, we follow a metal drummer who loses his hearing and has to come to grips with his new reality. This was a heartbreaking film. Riz Ahmed delivers a stellar performance as Ruben, showing us one of the best performances of the year. Like A Quiet Place, the sound editing and the sound mixing are a major component to this film. They're like a second main character. There were moments of complete silence that tore my heart into two, while there were moments that the sound hurt because I was used to hearing nothing. It's an emotional tolling film that really focuses on lawn and drawn out scenes to fully come to terms with what we're witnessing. It's a film about moving forward and self-acceptance done in a very unique way. And to end off my film festival week, I watched One Night in Miami. One Night in Miami follows a night with Cassius Clay, Sam Cooke, Jim Brown, and Malcolm X as they talk about their beliefs during the civil rights movement. Regina King does a great job in her directing debut, showing that she's a force to be reckoned with. She draws out some amazing performances 
particularly in Eli Gore as Cassius Clay and Kingsley Ben Adir as Malcolm X, who were incredibly similar to their real life counterparts. There were moments it felt drawn out or that it could have went deeper, but what truly drives this movie forward is the brilliant script. The conversations and debates held are the heart to this film and speak to the times we live in today. So yeah, those were the films I watched during the online virtual film festival. And I would like to hear your views if you've seen any of these films. Look online for your nearest film festival. They might have them playing. Till next time, thanks for watching. See you on the flip side.